It's been a, a 20 year journey. They're getting their funding from the state of North Carolina. And so for Darius to get the funding, to get it, get the statue built in such a short period of time, it's actually phenomenal. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And so we salute you for all your efforts. Um, and he was on every single detail. I mean, everybody knows Darius was engaged on this project. So I want you to know we thank you. We also thank the city. The city did a fantastic job. And I don't know if all of the city people who were on the SILS commemorative team are here. I would love for you to stand up because it was all of your hard work to create all of this in the organization. So I don't know if the, any of the members of the commemorative team are here, but Lenny Sopter and Tina Betts, Tanya Washington, uh, Parks and Rec. All right. Well, we're almost in the home stretch. I would like to introduce to you the sculptor. His name is John Hare. John is actually from North Carolina. He is world renowned. You know, when, you know, and a lot of us have never gone through this whole sculpture process. And I hope that we weren't a very difficult family to deal with. Okay, perfect, okay. Because we were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But he worked with us. He listened to our concerns. He listened to how we wanted the, sh the statue to actually look. And so I think you all will be extremely pleased uh, how it actually works. Um, this is a, uh, a moment in history. And it takes me back probably 30 years ago when my father won the mayoral uh, primary in 1992. And as one of the speakers said, there was this unbelievable sense of pride here in Wilmington. And there was, it was, it was, it was, um, we had euphoria. And everybody was walking around with their chests, you know, stuck out, you know, we got a black mayor. We're going to do it. The city's just changing. And it was, it was just something that was just overwhelming. And today, I feel the same way. I feel that same feeling from 30 years ago that it's about our community. It's about community pride. And I'm just overwhelmed also. And I just want to transition you just to one um, additional governor who wanted to just send his remarks since we have two gov former governor one former one former governor here and our existing our current governor but governor jack markell he wanted to be here but he's out of the country and he wanted me to read this uh short note to all of you it says dear jim like thousands of wilmingtonians i know you were a great mayor you led with conviction, courage, and creativity. Your legacy as mayor is hugely positive. Years later, I learned that as, a good, as good a mayor as you were, you were also an extraordinary husband and father. I had the privilege of knowing Evelyn, your kids, and he said he references me, who he had the pr uh, privilege of working with. He said I was a fantastic cabinet secretary. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but, but your family is one of integrity, decency, so your legacy is enhanced by their lives. Years from now, generations of Delawareans will see your statue, and as they study your life, they will realize that, if, that they have seen the statue of a great Delawarean who was a respected professor, a beloved mayor, a forebearer of generations of wonderful people. So before I ask my father to come up and speak, we call him a number of different names. We call him um, Dad, Daddy, Jim Sills, Mayor Sills, Professor, Papa. And let me tell you why we have to call him all those different names. Because sometimes he won't do what we tell him to do. <laughs> 
And the one thing that burns me up is when he will not answer that phone, that cell phone. So, Dad, we want you to come up, give some remarks, and the last thing I'll say, and a few of the speakers have referenced this, my mother, Evelyn Marie Sills, would be so proud today, and I just wish she was here, but she would, she would be walking around this entire state saying, did you see the statue? You know, there's a number of statues all across the state, but she would say, have you seen the statue? So, Dad, come on up. Uh, we're ready to hear your remarks. And then the city has a, uh, a button here that we're going to push to actually unveil the statue. So I think it's high tech. And it's, and come on up. Let's give them a standing ovation. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here on this great day to honor supposedly my accomplishments in Wilmington. Um, my kids have, Julie, Mark, and Jimmy, have reminded me not to talk too long <laughs> that all of you came to see the statute and not to hear me. <laughs> but I do want to emphasize the fact that people don't get to have statutes because of things that they have done. Most often they get to have a statute because of other things that people have done to pave the way. And I've had the good fortune, having come to this city in 1959, to get to know and work with some wonderful people, make some great friends, and have been entrusted with a lot of leadership roles because of those friendships. And I, uh, I feel fortunate that uh, I've come to know Wilmington and benefit from the love and caring that you've given me and my family. And uh, I think also I should say that I think I should note that not only am I being honored with a statue, but also being honored with a lot of friends who helped to make that possible. And uh, I'm grateful for those friendships. And I want to. Um, stress that as we stand here to look at the statue in a, in a few minutes, I want you to know that uh, I had a lot of help and I have a, a bridge named after me. <laughs> I live a few blocks away in one of the condo buildings next to this statue and, and this bridge. I think the only thing I'm missing right now is uh, a soul food restaurant that ought to be <laughs> somewhere out here. One of my favorite historians when I went to Mohouse College, some 70 
years ago. 70 years ago. And enrolled in my first course in black studies at Bowhouse 70 years ago. One of my favorite historians was W.E. Du Bois, who wrote a lot, was a noted advocate for racial and social equality, and he coined the phrase, for, 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 phrase called the talented tenth. And he had this notion that if we were going to achieve social equality in America, we had to rely upon black leaders, college educated leaders, who would ultimately become a part of the talented tenth, who would go out and do good and would try to make the world a better place in which to live. I came to Wilmington in 1959, imbued with the philosophy of W.E. Du Bois, wanting to come and try to help Wilmington to be a better place in which to live and to be a part of that talented tenth. I hope I've contributed to that. I hope I. Thank you. And now I'm mindful of my kids having told me to to keep to be mindful of why you are here. And so with those comments I'm going to push the button, Jimmy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on one second. We have one more thing. Okay. We have the benediction and then we're going to push the button. Oh, oh. We have one other speaker, great friend of mine, who has done a lot for the city of Wilmington. Reverend Lawrence Wright, who is president of the African American Heritage Center. And I, don't, I think we would be remiss if we didn't give him a chance to make some comments before we push the button. <laughs> Y'all can sit down. About to lose the church. <laughs> Several years ago, when I was a student on the campus of Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, I led the campaign Students for Clarence Leitner, who became the first African American mayor of Raleigh, North Carolina. He was a native of Raleigh, as Mayor Seals is a native of Raleigh. Fast forward and coming to Delaware in 1992 and 1996, I led the Ministers for Seals campaign for mayor. I am humbled to have had the opportunity to have worked for two native North Carolinians, both from the same city, but presided over different cities. And so Mayor Seals, thank you for the opportunity that you gave me those two years in those 
uh, eight years. I know I'm listed on the program for the, the, the benediction, but I have been informed that I must say something about Mayor Seal's involvement and his accomplishments with the African American Heritage Institute. There are some board members who are here. If you're here, wave your hand. When MBNA brought the five parcels located at 11th and Clifford Brown Walk for the exact purpose of establishing an African American Heritage Center, James Seals occupied the mayor's office, where he committed several million dollars formed a commission to study the feasibility of such a center. To our dismay, the commission assignment was incomplete and now the organization is on life support. Fast forwarding, if you will, Mayor Seals, having served two terms as mayor, no longer in office, but his passion still remains for an African American Heritage Center to be established. So what does he do? He accepts the presidency of the Board of Directors of the African American Heritage Center where he brought enthusiasm, excitement, and momentum. He began by a fundraiser in the form of a telethon, visited with various organizations as well as individuals encouraging them to participate. He was successful in negotiating an agreement with Mayor Williams, which included timelines. Needless to say, under Mayor Seals' leadership, AAHI met those challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, he made many presentations to various groups and secured their support, ascertaining from DINREC up to $625,000 for environmental study. Very much involved in the current agreement that is on the table with the city of Wilmington under the leadership of Mayor Przecki. So may I conclude with a special blessing to this noble professor, to this former state representative, to this former mayor, to this former director of people's settlement, to this former president and now president emeritus of the African American Heritage Institute. May we stand please. We petition you, O oh God, for one who has shown to mankind how to be content in the face of adversities. We beg of your divine will upon his many acts of involvement and accomplishments in so many different areas 
of society. It is our fervent prayer that you will continue to bless your servant man, Jim Seals, with your many spiritual benedictions. Now may the God of peace, the God of love, the God of kindness, the God of meekness, the God of long suffering, the God of joy, the God of goodness, be with Jim Seals not only now, but continuously throughout his life. And may this statue be a blessing and a testament and an inspiration to the youth now and generations yet to come. We ask this in the precious and matchless and magnificent name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. God bless you, Mayor Seals. And may the Christ continue to reign and rule in your life. Thank you all. At this time, I want to ask Mayor Seals if he would come, and Jimmy, and those that are on the stage, if you would come up a little closer, and we're going to do the countdown. Senator Carper, would you like to lead us in the countdown? I want you to lay up here. Come on up here. Give him a round of applause. What do you mean, my Woo! countdown we start with 10 we go to zero and when we go zero Jim would you push that button are you ready yeah are you ready yeah. are you ready yes. all right we're ready yes I hear you say 10 10 9 9 8 8, eight 7 7 6 6 5 5 4 4 3 3 2 2 1 1 0 0 the family if the family would go to the green uh, for photos when I ask the public if you would please stay on the sidewalk so the family can get to the green by the statue again I'm gonna ask the public if you would please stay on the sidewalk and ask the family to go to the green by the statue Great.